On the 30th of May, 1913, the First Balkan War ends. It lasted for almost eight months. The conflict has brought even more poverty in the Balkans. The Balkan League achieved a great and historical success against the Ottomans, a dynasty who ruled the region for centuries. The Ottoman Empire was almost expelled from continental Europe, losing important strategic points and cities. Among them was the historical city of Adrianople, the former Ottoman capital and one of the earliest conquests of the dynasty, centuries ago. Their European lands were distributed between the winners and Albania got its independence. But even if this was a major success for each member of the Balkan League, one of them wasn't so satisfied. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Throne Kingdom at War, a free-to-play online strategy game with millions of players, in which you can have some fun by building your own kingdom. If you are a fan of history, you probably love action, strategy, and battles. If you do, you will find this game quite interesting and captivating. You can customize your hero, build your own fortified city, and defeat your enemies. If you remember the old RPG strategy games and you love some fantasy added on, you will feel just at home. You can play it easily in the app or in the web browser. There's a link down in the description. Definitely check them out. It will help our channel out a lot, and it will bring you a good time by playing the way you want. Go there and claim your throne. Claim what is rightfully yours. However, the good relations between the victorious Balkan allies quickly disappeared, and this was due to the division of some lands, especially in Macedonia. During the pre-war negotiations that had resulted in the establishment of the Balkan League, Serbia and Bulgaria signed a secret agreement on the 13th of March, 1912, which determined their future boundaries, in effect sharing northern Macedonia between them. During the war, the Serbs succeeded in capturing an area far south of the agreed border. At the same time, a major goal for the Bulgarians was to capture the important port of Thessaloniki. But the Greeks advanced north, occupying the city and establishing a common Greek border with Serbia. When Bulgaria called upon Serbia to honor the pre-war agreement over northern Macedonia, the Serbs displeased at the great powers requiring them to give up their gains in northern Albania but Balkan forces were required to leave the territory of the new Albanian state. These problems ended the Serbo-Bulgarian alliance. Seeing Bulgaria as a potential threat, Serbia started negotiations with Greece, a country that also had reasons to be concerned about Bulgarian intentions. Just 28 days before the Bulgarian attack, Greece and Serbia signed a secret defensive alliance, confirming the current demarcation line between the two occupation zones as their mutual border, and concluding an alliance in case of an attack from Bulgaria or from Austria-Hungary. The Tsar of Bulgaria, Ferdinand, desired the creation of a new Bulgarian expanded state. In 1912, Ferdinand joined the other Balkan states in an assault on the Ottoman Empire to free occupied territories. He saw this war as a new crusade, declaring it a just great and sacred struggle of the cross against the crescent. Considering their numbers and their actions, Bulgaria contributed the most and also lost the greatest number of soldiers. The great powers insisted on the creation of an independent Albania. In the original documents for the Balkan League, Serbia and Greece had been pressured by Bulgaria to hand over most of Macedonia after they had freed it from Turkish rule. However, Serbia and Greece, responding to popular protest, said that they would keep the possession of the territories that their forces had occupied. In 1912, Bulgaria's national aspirations, as expressed by Tsar Ferdinand and the military leadership around him, exceeded the provisions of the 1878 Treaty of San Stefano. Considered even then as maximalistic, since it included both Eastern and Western Thrace, and all Macedonia, with Thessaloniki, Edirne, and Constantinople. A big dream for him, seen like a fantasy by others, was to be crowned in Constantinople, but the big plan failed after the Ottomans managed to hold their positions very close to their capital. By doing so, Constantinople wasn't conquered. By mid-June, Bulgaria had become aware of the agreement between Serbia and Greece, in case of a Bulgarian attack. On the 27th of June, Montenegro announced that it would side with Serbia in the event of a Serbian-Bulgarian war. One day after, Romania officially warned Bulgaria that it would not remain neutral in a new Balkan war. Russia tried to stop the upcoming conflict, 
but Russian diplomats realized that the Bulgarians had already decided to go to war with Serbia. As skirmishing continued in Macedonia, and the tension got higher and higher, for many it was clear that a new war is about to begin. On the 29th of June, the Bulgarian High Command, under the direct control of Tsar Ferdinand, ordered Bulgarian troops to start a surprise attack against both the Serbian and Greek positions, without declaring war, and to dismiss any orders contradicting the attack order. It's believed that the Tsar did that without notifying the government. The next day, the government put pressure on the general staff to order the army to cease hostilities, which caused confusion and loss of initiative and failed to remedy the state of undeclared war. Consequently, although the Bulgarian army had around 600,000 men, mobilizing in the beginning of the First Balkan War, there were only nine organizational divisions, giving a divisional strength closer to an army corps than to a division. Tactical necessities during and after the First Balkan War modified this original structure. A new 10th Division was formed, using two brigades from the 1st and 6th Divisions, and an additional three independent brigades were formed from new recruits. Also, their heavy structure remained. In the other team, the Greek Army of Macedonia had also nine divisions, but the total number of men under arms was only 118,000. Another decisive factor affecting the real strength of the divisions between the opposing armies was the distribution of artillery. The nine division strong Greek army had a total of 176 guns and the 10 division strong Serbian army 230. The Bulgarians had 1,116, a ratio of six to one against the Greeks and five to one against the Serbian army. The main Bulgarian attack was planned against the Serbs with their first, third, fourth, and fifth armies, while the second army was tasked with an attack towards Greek positions around Thessaloniki. However, in the crucial opening days of the war, only the fourth army and second army were ordered to advance. This allowed the Serbs to concentrate their forces against the attacking Bulgarians and hold their advance. The fourth Bulgarian army held a very important position, and they sought to conquer Serbia and Macedonia. The fighting started on the 29th to 30th of June, 1913. The 4th Bulgarian Army advanced and attacked Serbian positions, where 1st and 3rd Serbian armies were. A quick small success was followed by heavy Bulgarian losses in the 1st to the 3rd of July. The Serbs captured the whole 7th Division of the 4th Bulgarian Army without any fight. The attack was stopped and the offensive was pushed back. The Bulgarians dug into strong positions around the village of Kalamansi, at the Bregalnica River. On the 18th of July, the Serbian Third Army attacked and the Bulgarians resisted. The Bulgarians were outnumbered on the Greek front, and the low-level fighting soon turned into Greek attack. The Bulgarian forces were forced to withdraw from their positions north of Thessaloniki. The plan to quickly destroy the Serbian army in central Macedonia by concentrated attack turned out to be unrealistic and the Bulgarian army started to retreat. The Bulgarian Second Army in southern Macedonia, commanded by General Ivanov, held a line from Dodrin Lake southeast to Kilkis, Lachanas. On the 26th of June, the Bulgarian army received orders to attack Greece and advance towards Thessaloniki. The Greeks stopped them, and by the 29th of June, a general counterattack started. At Kilkis, the Bulgarians were defeated and the Greek forces advanced. Then, on the 5th of July, they captured Doiran, but were unable to cut off the Bulgarian retreating forces. On the 11th of July, the Greeks came in contact with the Serbs and then pushed on up the Struma River. The Serbian front had become static. King Constantine, seeing that the Bulgarian army at his front had already been defeated, ordered the Greek army to march further into Bulgaria. Romania declared war on Bulgaria on the 10th of July and started to advance unopposed in southern Dobruja and across the Danube. On the 20th of July, they occupied Vratza, 116 kilometers north of Bulgarian capital, Sofia. The capital was open to the invader, and the northwestern corner of the country was cut off and surrounded. The Romanian Air Force performed propaganda leaflet drops. Sofia became the first capital city in the world to be overflown by enemy aircraft. The lack of resistance to the Romanian invasion convinced the Ottomans to invade the territories just seceded to Bulgaria. The main object of the invasion was the recovery of Adrianople, which was captured by the Turkish forces without resistance. 
The Ottoman forces carried out atrocities against the Bulgarians in eastern Thrace and expelled nearly all of them. The odds were against Bulgaria by far. Encircled by enemies, their armies couldn't keep up. This situation was probably a result of poor management, aggressiveness in declarations, and willingness to go to war without taking into account the possible consequences. Bulgaria lashed out against its former allies, Serbia and Greece, with exhausted troops and a ludicrously optimistic strategy promoted by its impulsive Tsar Ferdinand. On the 10th of August, Bulgaria, Greece, Montenegro, Romania, and Serbia signed the Treaty of Bucharest. Macedonia was divided. Bulgaria thus enlarged its territory by 16% compared to what it was before the First Balkan War. Serbia almost doubled its size, and Greece expanded with around 68%. Also, a separate peace with the Ottomans was made. Bulgaria lost Adrianople and Eastern Thrace. Again, after this episode, Bulgaria will not be happy, and in 1915 will join the Central Powers. But this is a topic for another video. A big thank you again to our sponsor, Throne Kingdom at War. Don't forget to check them out by accessing the link down in the description. And also a big thank you to our eight awesome supporters on Patreon. For now, they are few, but they help our channel a lot. You can too. Support Nalegia by accessing the link down in the description. And by doing this, you can see some videos earlier, receive some additional information, and have your name at the end of the video. This was the Second Balkan War. For more animated history videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified every time a new awesome video is uploaded. Thanks for your consideration.